So you are, you're the second person I've had on this podcast who is well known for appearing in a pot noodle commercial. Oh, here we go. I've had the, um, I don't think you can, you know, raise a, a pot noodle to him, but we had two gorgeous Peter Bainham on. Did you, do you remember Peter Bainham doing it? Two gorgeous. Do you remember that? You might probably no. went in the country. I, to look, be fair. when I when I took the pot noodle ad, I didn't do my research. Okay, you've got to you've oh. got to go back through yeah. the, through the canon to work out how you're going to where, where I sit. Yeah, where he sits. There yeah. might be references think, to him. I think gorgeous. it was about the eighth series yeah. of pot noodles that I that I came in and I didn't watch any of the <laughs> didn't previous watch any ones. Of the others. It wouldn't yeah. have made any sense to you. <laughs> no, I'm not sure if pot noodles makes sense. How, how what was your, what were your pot noodles? You did quite a lot of pot noodle lovers. Didn't you? Uh, we did uh, we did three. Uh, I, lo- I love calling them series. We did yeah, three series. Three series. Three episodes. Three eps each series. Yeah. Um, and uh, like it's quite ridiculous because the first series of pot noodle ads that I was in <laughs> uh, was directed by Taika Waititi. Yeah. And then I know, right? Who did uh, look? They wanted Fly to the Concords, <laughs> and um, I auditioned for <laughs> the Pot Noodle lads and the first idea that they had. And then I had a meeting with them, and the ad guys literally said to me, in a Costa coffee, we really want Fly to the Concords. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm not. I'm not Fly to the Concords. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, we're flying out to New York tomorrow to watch them a show, and then we're going to pitch the idea to them. And I was like... That's great. Why am I here? <laughs> and they said, well, we just really enjoyed your audition. Um, and, and I was like, know. what? So now I have to m- meet you for you to let me know you're going to go with other New Zealanders? Um, anyway, they went to New York, found out they were going to be too expensive, so they came back to me. And, um, and Taika had directed some of those episodes, so that, right. I think they were desperate to get a Flyla Concords flavour. Yeah. Um, and they didn't take into consideration that I can't sing. <laughs> um, the other guy in the advert absolutely could. He's a fucking great singer. Um, and, uh, but the second series was directed by Garth Jennings. Wow, okay. Yeah, they really pulled out the fucking stops, yeah. man. Yeah. And, um, and, but in that first series, uh, a representative of Unilever, who owns Pot Noodle, said to me, um, do you want a year's supply of Pot Noodle? <laughs> And I said, um, yeah, that will be one pot noodle. <laughs> and I'll be honest, mate, I won't finish it. <laughs> and one of the ad guys pulled me aside and said, you shouldn't be saying that sort of thing to... <laughs> and then I went on uh, Rod Gilbert's BBC Wales uh, radio show and he <laughs> asked me a question, would you rather eat a pot noodle yeah. or a... Um, a cat that is, is roadkill. Um, Let me write this one down. This is sound, this sounds said, good for me. <laughs> well, mate, straight away, right? Yeah, the yeah. comedic answer is, I went, I'll eat the cat, Yeah. right? And then on the Monday, my agent's ringing me up going, OK, so I'm just going to read out part of your contract. <laughs> uh, and she said, uh, the pot noodle people have heard the radio show and they have heard you say that. Um, and they could ask for the money back. And so I was just fucking shitting myself. Right. Because in the, in the contract, it says, I can't besmirch the brand or something yeah. like that. And I basically said, <laughs> oh, I said, I said, I'll eat the cat. There'd be more nutrition in it. That was, Ooh. I think that's the, that was the bit they were upset about. That is um, pretty bad. Because yeah. I remember Peter Bainham, they were trying to convince, when Peter did it, they were trying to convince people that pot noodles were nutritious. <laughs> but they aren't nutritious. So legally, they weren't allowed to say in the advert, pot noodles are nutritious. Yeah. So what Peter said in, had to say in the advert was, what's all this about pot noodles being nutritious? <laughs> and then saying, I don't want them to be nutritious. I, want, I don't like faffy yeah. food, but they're not nutritious. Mate. But they got the idea they were nutritious. You're going to be in trouble again with pot noodles. They're going to come back for the money now. Well, the money, so have you oh spent no, all- years ago. Yeah. Years ago. I'm out of contract. Yeah, okay, I've done... Probably three three other series without me yeah, now. Yeah, probably. Uh, I think I'm, <laughs> I'm fine. Uh, I think they... So one of the pot noodle adverts was about uh, they'd cut the salt in the... Uh, right. In, one of the, in the Bombay bad boy. Um, and they'd cut it the by... The salt's the best bit, to be fair, though. <laughs> they'd cut it by 50%. Right. And you looked on the nutrition thing, and I did this on set, I looked on the nutrition thing, and it still said 70% of your daily intake. I was like... 
Oh my God. So before you cut up 50%, you'd eat a pot noodle and be like, oh, it feels like I'm sucking off the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> they were, look, they were really fun, the adverts. And, um, and one of them was a high school musical piss take. Yeah. And the extras all had to sign documents saying that they knew how to operate a kettle. Because <laughs> they, were, they were like kids in the background, sort of, you know, like 12, 13. And they all, they had to have interviews with their parents, with the kids, and they all had to say, yes, my child knows how to operate a kettle. Wow. We had a, a line in a, I'm so excited, I just wet my pants. And that had to go through so many lawyers <laughs> going, are you taking the piss out of incontinence? Uh, and it delayed filming. Right. Do you know what I mean? And they were like, but we, it was just like so much weird shit was happening. Yeah. It was great. Yeah, it sounds amazing. I loved it. I'm glad, I'm glad again it works. Let's see how this goes. You're oh, no. also the second person, maybe there's more. I think there might be more, actually. You might be the third person uh, who uh, starred in the sitcom The Persuasionists. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've had Adam Buxton. Was Ian Lee in it? Adam, but my character bullied Adam Buxton right. all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. It was, Adam, it wasn't Adam's finest hour, I think, by his own admission, the persuasion. I don't think it was anybody. <laughs> um, I, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clarify. I think we were all really good in it yeah. with what we had. Okay. Um, and for me, I went into that. I was like, oh, my God. I thought my life was changed. I was like, BBC sitcom with Simon Farnaby, Daisy Haggard, Adam Buxton. I'm on my way. <laughs> I can watch out, everybody. Here he comes. And it got panned. It did get panned. So hard. Um, and there were, there were times with the script where it didn't work. And so we all went away and wrote alternatives. And you've got fucking Adam Buxton script editing for you, and they didn't accept it. Right. <laughs> we had and Simon just... Farnaby, you wrote for the Paddington movies. Yeah. And, uh... and um, uh, Horrible Histories. Horrible and Histories, all that. yeah. And they just didn't use any... Other option, they just went, no, 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 this is how it's... And it's like, fuck, it's not, it's not working. Yeah. But um, I learned a lot on that, a lot. Uh, I had an amazing time. Um, and my naivety just was, looking back on it, was fucking beautiful. I remember we, we halfway through filming, the uh, comedy commissioner of the BBC left. And I just didn't... I'd heard about it, but I didn't think it was a thing. And I rock up on set, and the atmosphere was like, well, that's us dead in the water. We are dead. And I was like, what, what are you on about? And they're like, well, the new commissioner coming in isn't going to champion a project commissioned by the last commissioner, so we're going to get put out at an awful time. There's going to be no... And I'm like, but they spent so much money on this. Like, they wouldn't do that to us. <laughs> they spent a lot of money on us. And they're like, no, no, we're, we're dead in the water. And that's absolutely what... What happened? And yeah. I was like, fuck, how many? I don't think, I think if we'd been able to go to a second series, it could have been good. Yeah. I don't know if it would have been a masterpiece. It could have been good, though. There was a good amazing, dynamic it's a, it's between the cast. It's an amazing, really amazing yeah. cast. You just, yeah, you listen to that cast. It was a lovely amazing. dynamic between yeah. the cast. And um, I realised, like, I had a moment, because it was in front of a live audience. The first episode, the audience wranglers fucked up and got on the Blue Rinse Brigade. So... <laughs> So our first episode was recorded in front of 80, 80 year olds and it was brutal, <laughs> absolutely brutal. Um, but in one of the episodes, the, the warm-up uh, basically panicked and couldn't do their job. And so I sort of stepped in and just, you know, bantered with them and all that. And I, in that moment, I'd done warm-up before, yeah. I'd done acting before. I was doing stand-up material and I was like, oh my God, this is all my, it feels like my life is built up to this. And then I booked a tour in for when it was going to be released and uh, then uh, <clears throat> promptly cancelled it. So, oh. no, it was all right. Yeah. It it's, fine. you know, it's... Hasn't it it turned out too bad. No, it's, it is a brutal business though. And that, that thing, you know, that, I've been falling victim to that so much. Whether, oh, yeah. And the commission, the people making the choices change it all the time. It's, all not, time. it's very rare you get one for more than a couple of years. Yeah. Sometimes, but ironically, the one who didn't like me and Stu stayed in for about 10 years but uh, <laughs> to make sure we never came back. But uh, <laughs> that's, that's the only reason she was there. But yeah, it's so ridiculous and it should, you know, it should be, but yeah. It, it, it just felt like a massive yeah. waste of money. Yes. 
you know. Of our money, of our money, because it's the yeah, license money. Of course. Yeah. And it was like all because one person is like, oh, no, I don't yeah. want, because that's the glory for someone else. Yeah. And meanwhile, we're going, meanwhile, I was going, but this is my dream. Guys, <laughs> this is my dream. <laughs> I also learnt how to say the word detritus. Okay, good. Yeah. That's good to know. I don't even seen it written down. <laughs> <laughs> so I was calling it detritus. Detritus. And, uh, you know, do the first take, detritus. And everyone was like, well, what the fuck are you saying? <laughs> I was like, I'm saying detritus. You know, there's heaps of rubbish on the floor. It's detritus. Detritus. Am I? It is detritus. Yeah, it is detritus. Yeah. See, even now I'm still a bit... <laughs> it's like when I, uh, when I did an episode of Jonathan Creek. Yeah. <sighs> Miming a cigarette. Um, uh, there was this... <laughs> I was playing a New Zealander because I've got a very broad range. And um, I, I had a, in a scene, I had to say the words, um, and since that news broke, more women have come forward with similar complaints. And uh, the director stops me and goes, are you saying, are you saying woman or women? I was like, well, I'm from New Zealand, so that's how we say woman. He's like, yeah, but it's a group of women. I was like, yeah, but in New Zealand, like there's one woman and then there's a group of women. <laughs> like, I don't know if there's any New Zealanders here, but they'll hear the difference. Like, there's, there is a difference. Uh, and, like, they just, and I was like, do you want me to say women? And they're like, yeah. I was like, okay, it's going to sound weird because I'm going to go English on one, one word. Yeah. And everyone's laughing and all that, but I'm also going, I'm here for a day. I don't want to be the guy who slows the whole fucking production down because he can't say women. <laughs> So I'm then doing takes going, and since that news broke, more women have come forward. And they're like, no, don't hit the word women. And I was like, I'm not hitting any women. And on about the eighth take, right, I finally, you know, did what they needed. I'm going, and since that news broke, more women have come forward with similar complaints. And the director went, ah, oh, you're right, it does sound weird. <laughs> so we just went back and did it all again. Really? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That was fun, though. 